Okay, so for 10.4, we're still dealing with vectors, but we're taking an algebraic approach. And here's the big idea before we start adding, subtracting, and doing all that good stuff. Let's say this is P, and let's say this is Q. And let's say this is at 1, 1, and let's say this is at 4, 6. Okay. What are the horizontal and vertical components here? What are the horizontal and vertical components? How big are those sides of the triangle? If you actually drew the right triangle, right? How would you get from P to Q? What would you have to do? Go right three. Go right three up 5. Good. So we could say that positive 3 is the horizontal component and 5 is the vertical component. Okay? So what that means then is that instead of writing PQ out with a grid and drawing the vector itself, we introduce something we call component form. And all it looks like, we instead of parentheses, we use brackets to indicate that we're talking about a vector specifically. And then we simply list what the horizontal component is and what the vertical component is. So in this case, PQ would be the same as what, what? 3, 5. Ultimately, what's going to happen is that instead of drawing all these out, and this is kind of what, Colleen, you were asking about, if the numbers are always going to be small and manageable, it doesn't matter now anymore because you could always find the horizontal and vertical components and then compute everything that way. Okay? So, in general, here's how you would break it up into component form. Let's say P is at X1, Y1. Let's say Q is at a point X2, Y2. What would I do with all those coordinates to put it in the correct component form? Very good. X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1. And it has to be in this order because X2 is attached to which point? which is the, what's the name from yesterday? Also begins with a T. It's the terminal point, right? So it's got to be terminal minus initial. Terminal minus initial. In fact, you could even write it that way too. X terminal minus X initial. So you could also think of it like this. Okay? So real quick, in component form, if P is at 16, negative 7, and Q is at, let's say, 11, 11, How do we find what PQ is going to look like? Eleven minus sixteen is going to be the horizontal, and what's the vertical? Eleven minus negative seven. So our final answer 
is that this vector would have a horizontal component of negative 5 and a vertical of 18. Does that make sense? Hmm? Here's what it does for you. Many, 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 many things. First, let's use the same example here. Let's say I wanted to find this. What does this mean again? It means find the magnitude, right? So Josh, how, how do we do that? You can figure it out. You're a smart guy. No? What does this mean? Magnitude of P to Q, right? What do we normally, what did we do in the last section to find that? Distance formula, right? Do we have to do distance formula? Why not? We already know what the horizontal and vertical components are, right? Think of it like this. We have a 5 component going this way and an 18 component going that way, right? This is PQ right here. So how would I find the length? You just do what? Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse squared is going to be 18 squared plus 5 squared. 18 squared, help me out, is that 5? No. 376? 324? Yeah. For 18 squared? Yeah. Okay. 325. Plus 25. So that's going to be square root of 349. Okay. It tells us how long PQ is. Which, now we're going to introduce a shortcut. Okay. In general, if PQ has components A comma B. What is the magnitude going to be? What did we do essentially? So we did A squared plus B squared and then what? And how do we find our answer? Square root. So all this is saying now is instead of drawing out the pictures and doing distance formula, if you have the vectors in component form, you just do the square of the horizontal plus the square of the vertical and then take the square root. Okay? Questions on that? Going too fast? Oh, for Isaac? No, Isaac's already got this. So does Josh, apparently. Okay. Vector algebra. This makes stuff a whole lot easier. Of course I'm sure, Nathan. Do you like writing less stuff down? Okay. Let's say V has components V1, V2. Let's say U has components U1, and U2. What's so funny? You a big fan of U2? <laughs> Alright. What do you suppose we would do if I wanted to add 
vector v plus u if we have everything already in component form? It's not even that hard. If one vector moves, think of it this way, if one vector moves 5 to the right and another one moves 10 to the right, the total has moved how much to the right? What did you do to get that? So the rule is you just add. You just add the components up. It's that easy. And now what if I wanted to subtract? You subtract the components. So these are two things you have to be comfortable with. The other is this. Where? You sure? Okay. All right. Any any other questions? Maybe we should have changed the two variables and didn't look like Yeah. Yeah, maybe you should make it larger so it looks like the one behind I could use gammas and size and omicrons if you want. Is that better? I was just I was just saying maybe an X and No, not chromosomes. That's not a Greek letter. What's a gamma? Gamma, here's the gamma right there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. Scalar multiplication is pretty easy as well. If you have a scalar, which just means a number, oh, sorry, let me rewrite that. Times a vector, let's say AB. Scalar means you have a normal number and you're multiplying it with a vector. Well, sometimes if you are applying a force, sometimes you might figure out you need something twice as big to make something actually move or maybe you don't need quite as much, so maybe you only need a third of that size. And this is exactly what you would do. You would just multiply the components by whatever that scalar number is. Mm -hmm. it's, that easy. it's that easy, yep. All right, so we'll work through an example quickly and try to get through the rest of the notes. So try not to interrupt unless you really are confused. Let's say we have a vector that has a 1, 2 component called V. Let's say U has a negative 9, 3 component. Let's say W has 4 and negative 7 as its components. We'll do a few different things so you can see how this works. Let's say we want to find V plus U. How do we add V plus U? So all we do is 1 plus comma 2 plus 3. So my final answer is negative 8, 5. Done. Questions on that? What if, waiting, <laughs> what if I wanted to do this, magnitude of V minus 3W, what do we do first? But, well, yeah. So let's write it out. What's V? 
1, 2. Minus, what is, if I triple W, what do I get? 12 and negative 21. Everybody good so far? And now we are, we are subtracting these, right? So what's 1 minus 12? Negative 11, good. 2 minus negative 21 is? 23. And now what do all these crazy symbols mean? This means to find the magnitude of this, which is easy because this is the horizontal, that's the vertical, that's like the legs of the right triangle, right? You just put what under a square root? Very good. It's that easy. Now I need some help, though. What is this? 121. The total is 650. Just for completeness sakes, what's 23 squared? 539. 29. Thank you. Yep. Oh, sorry. Uh, 650 will reduce. Let's see, what is that? 50 times what? 50 and 13? So 13 can't reduce, but 50 is 25 and 2, so this will be 5 root 26. Good. Okay. All right. Got to keep going here. That's pretty much how you add, multiply, and subtract vectors, okay? Now, some other common uses and notations. Let's introduce what unit vectors look like. When we did unit circle, that referred to a circle with how big of a radius? One. One. If we're talking about unit vectors, how big are the vectors going to be? One. Pretty easy. So here's what they look like. We define a vector that is horizontal and to the right, that is one unit long, as I. Yes. I is horizontal, J is going to be vertical. Is this like an always thing? Or is this yes. No, this is always. Please pardon this interruption. Juniors, tomorrow you will be participating in your junior seminar. Please take a second when you're in the front and back foyer today to notice which room you're going to. The rooms for your seminar tomorrow morning will be different. Please make sure that you know which room you're going to for your seminar tomorrow. Again, that's juniors. Please make sure you know what room you're going to tomorrow for seminar. Check the front and back foyers, the list. Thank you. Okay. So, I literally means we have a one horizontal component and nothing else. J means we have a one vertical component and nothing else. Okay? It's just common no notation that you need to be comfortable with. Now, what this means then is that any vector, let's say v equals x comma y, can be split up or written in ij form. So here, let's do that. The question is, how many one zeros do I need to add with how many zero ones to make x and y of these? It'll make Okay. What's the horizontal component here? x. How many units do I have to have so that it adds up to x? One. X, very good. Here I have what for the vertical? 
y. So how many of the little vertical units do I need to add to make a total of y? Does everybody see that? Okay, so this means that, and I mean you don't have to remember this because it'll be really easy. What is one zero a name for? One zero is actually our i vector. Zero one is actually our j vector. So we can write this as x times i plus y times j. Okay? So look how quick and easy this is. We're almost done, by the way. I'm going to go through three problems in the last four minutes. Negative 7, 11. Currently, what form is this in? Component. If I want to put this in IJ notation, how many i's do I need to add with how many j's? Negative 7 and 11. Done. This is your answer. That's it. Just like we did up here. If I asked you how many horizontal units do you need, you all said x, right? Well, that's negative 7 times i here. If I asked you how many vertical units you needed, Set 11 of those. So that's 11 J's. Okay. If we go the other direction. With the direction thing? Yeah. Well, we're going to introduce that in a second. Uh, let's start with one like this. What if I have 4I minus 3J? Currently, this is in what format? This is the ij form. In component form, what would it be? 4, negative 3. Done. Piece of cake. We have some, not, not a lot. It's commonly used notation in engineering. I's and j's. Last problem for today. Find a unit vector in the same direction as 940. Okay, I'll explain this slowly but concisely. Is this a unit long right now? No. Could we find how long it is really quickly? Yeah. How do we find the length right now? Square root of what? And if you didn't catch that this was a triple, it is. It's going to be 41 when you add them up and square root it. Okay? So here's, here's the picture that will remind you what to do for these kinds of problems. We have a 9 vertical a 40 horizontal, and we just found out that this hypotenuse is 41 long. Here's the vector we're talking about. And the directions say to find a vector that's in the same direction as this 41 length vector, but it only needs to be one unit long. Well, what did you do in geometry if you wanted to scale down the triangle? How do we reduce the sides? If I want to make this a 1, what could I divide by? 41. So divide everything by 41. So my new triangle is 1. And then what's the horizontal and vertical now? 9 over 41 and 40 over 41. Two more seconds. So what are the horizontal and vertical components then? 9 over 41 and 40 over 41. Very good. So this vector is in the same direction as the original one. It's just one unit long because we've scaled it down. That's it. Make sure you do your homework tonight. Oh, farewell.